All right. Now we're going to get a little deeper into the teachings of the mystical Kabbalah. This is a small presentation on the 10 Sephiroth. We're going to talk about the energies they represent, their functions in the metaphysical, and their correspondences. Should be a little bit longer than the last one. And yes, we'll do, um, I'm going to do stuff on the outer body stuff too, but I got to go down this line first. All right, so the tree of life is made up of 10 Sephiroth. Number one being the Kether, which is a crown. Number two, Chokma, wisdom. Number three, Bina, which means understanding. Four, Chesed, which means mercy. Five, which means is Gabor, which is severity or strength. Six, Tifereth, which means beauty or harmony. Number seven, Natsak, which is victory. Number eight means splendor or glory. Hod, number nine, Yesod, the foundation. And number 10, Malkuth, kingdom. There is a law of the energies according to Paul Foster Case or natural law here. Uh, and this is a, you can look this up on the Builders of the Additum website, another fantastic school of teaching this material. And this is called the Pattern of the Trestle Board. I carry this little card around with me in my wallet, and I ordered it from their website too. So the Pattern of the Trestle Board is a most startling set of positive statements relating to the ten divine emanations of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. It's both an affirmation of reality and a meditational technique. It helps the spiritual aspirant attain to a more conscious expression of this reality. It is a tenfold picture of the destiny of man and the evolutionary scheme as revealed by the secret wisdom. In learning how to live with this divine pattern on the trestle board, man becomes the full manifestation of cosmic attributes. And you can see the prayer there on the right, or meditation. So you kind of start from zero, then you go down the tree. So this is the truth about the self. All the power that ever was or will be is here right now. Number one, Kether. I am a center of expression for the primal will to good, which eternally creates and sustains the universe. Number two, Chokma. Through me, its unfailing wisdom takes form and thought and word. Number three, Bina. Filled with understanding of its perfect law, I am guided moment by moment along the path of liberation. Number four, Chesed. From the exhaustless riches of, it, of its limitless substance, I draw all things needful, both spiritual and material. Number five, Gabor. I recognize the manifestation of the undeviating justice in all the circumstances of my life. Number six, Tiferet. In all things great and small, I see the beauty of the divine expressions. Number seven, attack. Living from that will, supported by its unfailing wisdom and understanding, mine is the victorious life. Number eight, hold. I look forward with confidence to the perfect realization of the eternal splendor of the limitless light. Number nine, yes on. In thought and word and deed, I rest my life from day to day upon the sure foundation of eternal being. And number 10, Malkuth. The kingdom of spirit is embodied in my flesh. So there's a lot in that prayer and meditation. There's a lot to be said, a lot to be understood, I believe, personally. But when you hear terms like the divine or cosmic or I am that I am, or even things like natural law, this short prayer here will help you understand the bigger picture. And that's Sometimes we've got to look at the bigger picture. And then when we get into the 10 Sephiroth, we're going to look at the parts of the picture so that we can understand uh, a little bit more about what it means to come into enlightenment or ascension or the higher self. But also all this talk about manifestation, how things naturally manifest into the world, too. So we're going to start at the top with Kether. Let me move my microphone here. So Kether, 
which means the crown. All that is the breath of that which is not, the source of energy from the infinite unmanifest, God the creator, or from where we come and return. Some of the symbols that you'll see that correspond with this are anytime you see crowns or a point or a swastika in the color white. So the concept of this is the limitless concentration of light inside of infinity or oneness. So when you hear things like oneness, that's where this energy resides in this philosophy, okay? Or the, the natural law, if you want to look at it like that. It is also the power of conscious. So and when you look into mythology, you'll see uh, beings like a moon or the concealed one or opener of the day or Ta, the divine potter of the wheel. In the Abrahamic religion, uh, it is the archangel of presence or Metatron or the fiery flame or burning fire. It also corresponds with the energy of the original will force and the crown of all. All that is, all that was, and all that will ever be. <clears throat> and in the tarot, this is where uh, the four aces reside, or the roots of the four elements. All right, we're going to go to... Well, I was just going to do this, but I'd like to... Uh, I know people don't like reading, but these are small excerpts that bring out kind of the romantic side of this, all right? So here's an excerpt on Kether. And Kether is the divine white brilliance, the scintillation and uh, coruscation of the divine glory, that light which lighteth the universe, that light which surpasseth the glory of the sun, and beside which the light of mortals is but darkness, and concerning which is not fitting that we should speak more fully. And the sphere of its operation is called Brashith HaGilgum, the beginning of the whirling, the premium mobile for the first mover, which bestoweth the gift of life in all things and filleth the whole universe. And Echeye is the name of the divine essence in Kether, or I am that I am. And its archangel is the prince of countenances, Metatron, he who bringeth forth others before the face of God. And the name of its order of angels is called Shayoth HaKadosh the holy living creatures, which are also called the order of the seraphim. And there we go. All right, so the next one is Chokma. Chokma is, which means wisdom, is the supernal father, the will to force, the dynamic outpouring energy. Uh, unorganized and uncompensated. You could call it the ultimate divine masculine, the great stimulator, the first positive. Some of the symbols you'll see are the phallus, uh, the straight line, the yod, and, and the yod forces, of, or the yod name of yod heh vav -Hey. the sphere of the zodiac is another symbol, and the color gray. So some of the concepts that can be understood by learning about this, meditating upon it, and understanding it is fatherhood, maleness, or the positive pole. Its divine name corresponds with that old name of Yah. If you look into the study and studying angels that correspond with it, the angel or the god of mystery, which is Ratzael, or the angel, which means the god of mystery. Again, the wheel of the zodiac is represented here, the beginning and creation of the world. This is where differentiated has started. So the first energies of difference, the first polarization, and the creation of duality. So it's the positive acting force or motion itself. The ultimate giving, I guess you could say. And when you, we get into the tarot, you'll see that this is where all the twos reside, but also the four kings when it comes to the court cards, or you could say the parts of the soul. Here is the excerpt. I would like to read about it. Very, very short excerpt. And Chokma is a cloud-like energy which containeth various colors and is mixed with them, like a transparent pearl-hued mist, yet radiating with all. 
as if behind it there was a brilliant glory, and the sphere of its influence is Masloth, the starry heaven, wherein it disposeth the forms of things, and Yah is the divine ideal wisdom, and its archangel is Ratzel, the prince and princes of the knowledge of hidden and concealed things, and the name of its orders of angels is the Ophanum. The wheels are the whirling forces, which are also called the order of the cherubim. All right, let me see if I can get to the next slide here. All right, so the next one is Bina, which means understanding. So now we've got Kether, wisdom and understanding. Or I am, wisdom and understanding. And this is the supernal mother, the organizer and compensator, the bright fertile mother, or the great sea. Um, it's been called a lot of things. So it's the concept of motherhood, uh, or the Holy Spirit, or the feminine element of God, the dwelling place of the human soul, the great mother. Its divine name corresponds in the Abrahamic religions of uh, Jehovah Elohim or yod heh vav -He Elohim. The supernal triad of creation resides here. The divine triad that separates the other seven by the abyss, which is that sphere of Doth. We haven't discussed yet, but we will. Like I said before, known as the wide open sea or waters that created us all, it corresponds with the negative pole. It is the disciplined and limiting principle that controls uh, forces. Some of the symbols you'll see that correspond with it are the yoni, the triangle, the cup, uh, the word hey, the Hebrew word hey, Saturn, or the color black. And also uh, the four threes of the tarot, this energy reside in here, and the four queens of the core cards, or the parts of the soul, right? So when we uh, talk about this a lot of times, this is the ultimate divine feminine, the great mother or mother Gaia. I don't want people to get the idea of male is positive and feminine is negative. In fact, it's here where the entire Neshama or the first uh, supernal triad resides in this sphere. So think about, if you want to think about the, a line in a circle or a dot in a circle or sperm and egg, it takes these energies to create reality to begin with. This is all observable too. All right, so um, the short excerpt here, get a little romantic with it, of course. And Bina is a thick darkness, which yet veileth the divine glory, which all colors are hidden, wherein is mystery and depth and silence, and yet... It is the habitation of the supernal light, and there is the supernal triad completed, and the sphere of its operation is Shabbatai, or rest, and it giveth forms and similitudes unto chaotic matter, and it ruleth the sphere of action of the planet Saturn. And Jehovah Elohim is the perfection of creation and the life of the world to come. And its archangel is Sasakiel, the prince of the spiritual strife against evil. And the name of the angels is the Aralim, the strong and mighty ones who are also called the Order of the Thrones. Get to the next slide here. It's hard to get through all of this without messing something up. It really is. Okay. Next one is Chesed. The fourth sphere, all right, which is the builder. It means mercy, by the way, but it also has the energies of the builder or the framework of manifestation or the loving king who is father, the receptacle of all power or the kindly shepherd. Some of the symbols that you'll see that correspond with it or you can meditate upon to understand are the pyramid, the square, the orb and equal arm cross, and the crook and the scepter, Jupiter, and the color blue. So conceptually, it's divine or nature's leadership. So it's order out of chaos, freedom and liberty inside the laws of nature. As much freedom and liberty as we can have inside the laws of nature. It also represents effectual leadership, which is the crying need of the world at this time. It's also fatherly, caring love. And it corresponds with the divine name El and the Archangel of Righteousness of God, which is Zadkiel, 
It also means completion and forgiveness or the wise man that controls forces. And here are the, you'll, when you get into studying and meditating on the tarot, the four fours reside here. It's kind of cool too in nature and in the universe, Jupiter does protect us, doesn't it? So a little romance here. Here's the excerpt I want to read to you. So Enchokma is the radix of blue, and thence is there a blue color, pure and primitive, and glistening with a spiritual light which is reflected straight down into Chesed. And the sphere of operation of Chesed is called Sedek or Justice, and it's fashioned the images of material things bestowing peace and mercy, and it ruleth the sphere of the action of the planet Jupiter. And Al is the title of a God strong and mighty, ruling in glory, magnificence and grace. And grace. And the archangel of Chesed is Zatkiel, the prince of mercy and beneficence. And the name of the order of the angels is the Chasmalim, or brilliant ones, who are also called the order of dominions or dominations. The Sephir Chesed is also called Gedula, or magnificence and glory. All right, let's go to the next one. Gabura, strength and severity, corresponds with the, the fifth sphere, which you'll see in a lot of trees is the fifth red sphere. The destroyer, the warrior king, or the warrior, the power of judgment, the clarifier, the eliminator of useless things, and severity. Some of the uh, uh, symbols that you'll see that, that correspond with it are the pentagon, the Tudor rose of five petals, the sword, the spear, the scourge, Mars, and the color red. And here also the four fives are shown of the tarot to be in this energy as well. So conceptually, uh, we understand severity and strength, which is the power of destruction, the power of war, and of tearing down. Its divine name in the Abrahamic religions is the Elohim Gabor, or powerful God, or the feminine principle of demanding and punishing expressions. It expresses justice and necessity. The archangel is Chamael or Samael, also Kamael too. When you really start getting into this stuff, tough love or the tester of things, the right hand of God or the force that tests creation. So in magic, the magician creates the will force to liberate himself from what is not needed or what prevents his enlightenment limiting, but at the same time pushes creation according to the divine plan. So if you think that our government created a Pentagon for no reason, think again. Uh, someone knew what they were doing when they invoked that symbol and the energetic understandings of it or the aggregoric understandings of it. All right. Um, and also a lot of people ask, well, why do you draw pentagrams? And uh, when you do the banishing ritual, now you understand why. The pentagram itself means a lot of things, but that energy is also there represented little romance for you. Here's an excerpt. And Bina is the radix of red, and therein is a red color, pure and scintillating and flashing with flames, which is reflected straight down into Gabura. The sphere of its operations is called Madim, or violent rushing, which is a force, and it bringeth fortitude and war and strength and slaughter, as it were, the flaming sword of an avenging god, and it ruleth the sphere of action of the planet Mars, and Elohim Gabor is the Elohim, mighty and terrible, judging and avenging, evil, ruling in wrath and terror and storm, and at whose steps are lightning and flame. And its archangel is Kamayo, the prince of strength and courage. And the name of the order of the angels is the seraphim, the flaming ones, who are also called the order of the powers. The Sephira Gabura is also called Pachad, or terror and fear. Remember, this is also the start of the, the second uh, triad of ethics. All right, let's go to the next slide. 
well, not the start, but uh, Chesed and Gabor are the, the start, which end up balanced in the next one that we're going to go to, which is Tifereth. All right. So this is what we're supposedly striving for. Tifereth. Tifereth, meaning beauty and harmony. God the Son, S-O-N, and also God the Son, S-U-N, the sacrifice gods, the consciousness of the higher self, the great masters, vision and harmony, healing and redemption, and the elemental kings. Some of the symbols that you'll see that correspond with it are the Calvary cross, the rose cross, the truncated pyramid, the cube, the vav, the sun, and the color yellow. Here also reside the four sixes and the four princes and a lot of decks or the four knights in the Arthur Edward Waite deck. So here conceptually, we, we know now that it means beauty and harmony or, or balance in the resurrected God like Osiris, Christ, Krishna, all those different um, teachings, etc. Christ consciousness or the anointed one or the true king. Also represents a six-dimensional cube and unfolded becomes the cross. In the Abrahamic religions, uh, in the mysteries too, the divine name is Jehovah Eloah Vadaoth or Yod He Vav He Eloah Vadaoth, which is the Lord God of Knowledge. It is the center and balance of all the Sephiroth, left to right, top to bottom, as above, so below, heaven and earth. Uh, the archangel here is the archangel of beauty and healing, which is Raphael. This is the thing that mediates that which is above and below. Nothing can pass through Tifereth without its knowledge or consent. So by way of the human getting to the knowledge of the father, you have to know the knowledge of Tifereth. You, ha you can't get through it without being that way. I guess you could call it the way. This is where the ego becomes fully conscious. And the primary goal of the magician here is to merge into this consciousness and converse with the holy guardian angel or the higher self. All right, so a little uh, romantic excerpt here. The Kether, I'm sorry, and Kether is the radix of a golden glory. And thence is there a pure, primitive, and sparkling, gleaming golden yellow, which is reflected down into Tifereth. This is the first reflected triad completed, and the sphere of its operation is that of Shemesh, the solar light, and bestoweth life, light, and brilliancy, and metallic matter, and it ruleth the sphere of action and of the sun. And Jehovah, Eloah Vadaoth, is a god of knowledge and wisdom, ruling over the light of the universe, and its archangel is Raphael, the prince of brightness, beauty, and life, and healing. And the name of the order of the angels is the Melikim, that is, kings or angelic kings, who are also called the order of virtues, angels, and rulers. Okay, next one. Again, I'll, I'm going to, I think I'll have to put this in gum road so you guys can, if you want to keep this stuff for your own studies, you can. All right, so the next one is the seventh sphere of Netzach, which now we're getting down into the, uh, the astral realms, right? We're getting closer to it, into those energies. This is where the four uh, sevens of the tarot reside. It corresponds with love and feelings and instincts or the group mind, nature, uh, and the arts. Okay. Some of the symbols you'll see are the girdle, the rose, the lamp, Venus, the heptagram, and the color green. So conceptually, this is where the human senses are, the integration of our surroundings, the passion of our social experiences, the passion and energy that motivates interaction and creativity. The fire or passion of emotion and feelings that evoke our creativity or the creative forces that are inside us. Um, in the Abrahamic religions or mysteries, the divine name is yod heh vav -He zabaoth or Lord of Hosts. And here we can uh, understand the energies of nature's ecstasy or joy or delight and fervor reside here. The archangel here is Haneo or the grace of God. 
Also the energies of love and marriage, joy, fulfillment, pleasure, all of the arts it forms and its beauty. Here's also the energies of erotic attraction and sexuality or the driving energy and emotions that bring the two and one together, the two poles together. The energies of devotion and the energies that come from the heart. All right. So the this plane is is fascinating. A little romance here. Here's the excerpt. The beams of Chesed and Gabor meet in Netzach, and thence in Netzach arises a green, pure, brilliant liquid and gleaming like an emerald. And the sphere of its operations is that of the Noga, or external splendor, producing zeal, love, harmony, and it ruleth the sphere of action of the planet Venus and the nature of the vegetable world. And Jehovah Samaoth is a god of hosts and of armies of the triumph and of victory, ruling the universe in justice and eternity. And its archangel Hanael is the prince of love and harmony. In the name of the order of the angels, it's the Elohim, or gods, who are also called the order of the principalities. All right, next slide. So this is Hod, which means splendor. It is the energy, it's the eighth sphere, the energy of reason or the individual mind, the energy of systems, magic, science, the contact point of the masters. Of, it's also the energy of language and visual images. Some of the uh, symbols you'll see are the name and versicles or the apron, uh, the planet Mercury or the symbol of Mercury, the octagon or the color orange. And uh, conceptually, this is, we understand it to be splendor or glory, or mental, mental images inside the mind or mind plane, or the energy of intellectual effort, the nature of God's philosophies, or science by analysis, or science itself. It's also the word, or speech, or writing, communication, science, and magic. So the energy of magic resides here too. In the uh, Abrahamic religions or mysteries the divine name is the elohim sabaoth or lord of hosts as well so it represents mental activity that is never still or in constant motion the archangel here represented as michael or michael which is means who is like god means a lot of other things too but uh, you'll see things in books uh, three books that I know of that say the same exact thing. Mercury nearest the sun reflects the light of the sun more than any other planet or satellite. This is also uh, the energy that represents the discipline that limits impulsions and creations of Netzach. Realism and structure understood and needed to live. So upon this plane, you see the opposites of uh, Netzach and Hod, right? So you could see... Uh, how these things kind of check each other in a balance. So unchecked reason or unchecked mental energy leads to stagnation and life ending. Even Robert Monroe called it a very low vibration. An unchecked passion is that but a mist that you cannot catch and leads nowhere as well. Hopefully we're starting to see a pattern here, right? One can only hope. Um, all right, here we go with the uh, excerpt. The beams of Gaborah and Tifereth met in Hod, and thence arises in Hod, a brilliant, pure, and flashing orange tawny, and the sphere of its operations is that of the Kokab, or the stellar light, bestowing elegance, swiftness, scientific knowledge, and art, and consistency of speech, and it ruleth the sphere of the actions of the planet Mercury. And the Elohim Sabaoth is also a god of hosts and of armies, of mercy and agreement, of praise and honor, ruling the universe in wisdom and harmony. And its archangels is Michael, the prince of splendor and wisdom. And the name of its order of angels is Benai Elohim, or sons of the gods, who are also called the order of the archangels. Okay. Next slide.
Now we can see three, six, nine. Things are coming into manifestation, right? Nine's another fascinating number that we can get into in Gematria where you realize that uh, a lot of things talked about in the Bible come to this number. Yes, so the foundation, the astral light, the storehouse of images, uh, the cyclic energies that underlie matter itself. Some of the uh, symbols you'll see are the perfume and sandals, the nonagon, the moon, or the color violet, and also the four nines of the tarot reside here. Um, so conceptually, we understand this is fer fertility and sexuality or the generative power of nature. So you can imagine being naked and carrying a heavy burden. That's the energy. So it represents the etheric or astral world, and it provides the blueprints and stability of the material world, which can be changed by altering the invisible astral fields and images. And the Hebrew Judaic religions or mysteries, the divine name is Shaddai El Kai, which is the almighty living God or Lord of generation. It also is represented by the womb that brings the physical into existence. The archangel here, Residing here is Gabriel, which means God is my strength. It also corresponds with the collective unconscious and the personal unconscious or the collective soul. I hadn't heard that band in a while. I love that band. This is where the energy of egregores and group soul is also created here. It's also where we come to understand the sign of silence, which is understood here. So... In this realm lies all the blueprints of things before they come into manifestation, but they can be altered, formed, or changed. So when enough of enough souls come into agreement with something, they can change things. This is why you see the sign of silence. So in the world of secret societies and all this stuff, the sign of silence was either used in a great light working or magical way or in a black way of sorcery. And the best way to tell this is go back up the tree where you get to the ethics again. Like, why are you keeping things silent? Is it because you don't want good things to get stolen or you don't want people to hurt themselves? Or are you keeping things silent because uh, you want something all to yourself so you that you can have power or whatever? Regardless of however you use the energy, it will manifest. And this is why the sign of silence is understood. A little romantic excerpt for Yesod. So the beams of Chesed and Geborah meet in Yesod, and thence ariseth in Yesod a brilliant deep violet purple or puce, and thus is the third triad completed, and the sphere of its operation is that of Levana, or the lunar beam, bestowing change, increase, and decrease upon created things, and it ruleth the sphere of action of the moon, and the nature of mankind. And should I, as a God who sheddeth benefits, omnipotent and satisfying, and Al Kai is the God of life, the living one. Its archangel is Gabriel, the prince of change and alteration. And the name of the order of the angels is the Cherubim, or Cherubic ones, who are called the order of the angels. All right, finally, we're going to get to Malkuth here. <clears throat> so Malkuth, the tenth sphere, the kingdom, the earth we walk on, the reflected of uh, the reflection of Kether below, the completion, the inferior mother, the bride of the microprosopos. Some of the symbols that you might see are the altar of the double cube, the equal arm cross, the mystic circle, the triangle of art, the final hay, the decagon, and its colors are citron, olive, and russet black. So conceptually, this is the kingdom or final manifestation, the final emanation of the filing system of cups or sephiroth. This is sometimes symbolized as the open gate to the higher or interior, or the gate to the interior sephiroth. It is the sphere of manifested elements of fire, water, air, and earth. In uh, the Jewish mystic tradition, the divine name is Adonai Ha-Aretz, or Lord of the Earth. It's also uh, the divine kingdom, 
The archangels that rule here are Sandalphon, or the godfather, or co-brother, the co-brother to Metatron. And it is also known as the sphere of the manifested elements, the existential creation where man exists in physical form, the dense slowness and resistance that allows physical life to exist. It's the comprehension of the whole creation shown in our physical reality. Malkuth is in Kether, and Kether and Malkuth, as above, so below, or I am that I am. This is a bit of a, a longer excerpt, but I still think it's beautiful. And from the rays of this triad, Netzach, Hod, and Yesod, there appear three colors in Malkuth together with a fourth, which is their synthesis. Thus, from the orange tawny of Hod and the green nature of Netzach, there goeth forth a certain greenish citron color, yet pure and translucent withal. And from the orange tawny of Hod, mingled with the puce of Yesod, there goeth forth a certain russet brown, Russet yet gleaming with a hidden fire. And from the green of Netzach and the puce of Yesod, there goeth forth a certain uh, darkening green, olive yet rich and glowing withal. And the synthesis of all these is a blackness which bordereth upon the Klippoth. Thus are the colors of the Sephiroth completed in their feminine or rainbow scale. Moreover, though the tree of life operates through all the ten Sephiroth, yet it is referred <clears throat> in a special manner to Tifereth also. Though the branches of the tree of knowledge of good and evil stretch into the seven lower Sephiroth and downward into the kingdom of shells, yet it is referred especially unto Malkuth that way. Similarly, with Netzach and Hod, the right and left columns of the Sephiroth are referred respectively thereto. And Malkuth, Adonai Ha'aretz, is God, the Lord and King, ruling over the kingdom and empire, which is the visible universe. And Sholem Yesodoth, the brother of foundations, or Alam Yesodoth, the world of the elements, is the name of the sphere of the operation of Malkuth, which is called the sphere of elements from which all things are formed, and its archangels are actually three. Metatron, the prince of countenance, reflected from Kether and Sandalphon, the prince of prayer, feminine, and Nefesh HaMessiah, the soul of the reconciler for earth. And the order of angels is a shim, or flames of fire, as it is written, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers as a flaming fire? And these are also called the order of blessed souls, or the souls of the just made perfect. <clears throat> Alright, so now we understand the mystic energies of the ten sephira in its basic form, which is a good thing. So here's some recommended reading so you can get deeper into this knowledge. Uh, the Tree of Life by Israel Regardi, great book. The Mystical Kabbalah by Dion Fortune, awesome. All these are awesome. The Garden of Pomegranates by Israel Regardi. Kabbalah Magic and the Great Work of Self-Transformation by Liam Thomas Christopher. The History of God by Karen Armstrong. The Bible, Genesis, that's spelled wrong, and Revelations. The One-Year Manual by Israel Regardi. The Chicken Kabbalah by Lon Milo Duquette. The Kabbalistic Tarot by Robert Wang. And to understand the process of magic in its deepest and most intellectual form, there is a manual by David Griffith called the Ritual Magic Manual. I believe you can get the uh, PDF on their website too. And Book T, or the Tarot inside of the Golden Dawn book by Israel Regardi. And there's a ton more books that you can get on this, but these are the ones that I, I recommend... Uh, kind of to start with. So, some questions to ask after all of this and to contemplate on it. <clears throat> Do I understand how things manifest a little better? You know, we're taught that you have to see it, visualize it, feel it in your emotions and use the visualization process and to act upon it to bring things into manifestation. But when we do that and things don't manifest exactly the way we want or things turn out crazy or whatever, I think it's because we don't understand the laws of nature in a little bit deeper process of understanding. So will this help you with that? That's the big question. Do these teachings lie in the fabric of many religions, caste systems, philosophies, and understandings? Because we're looking for parallels, right? That's what we're looking for. 
If I observe myself, others in nature, do I see and experience these understandings as they are taught and played out? And why did all the societies of all kinds, good, bad, small, big, especially in the West, keep this information secret? Does it withstand the test of time? These are somewhat rhetorical, but like I said, only if I was talking to myself. How many different philosophical, religious, and transformative systems are here? And when tested, can I see and experience the process of manifestation, creation, and a path to the higher self and higher knowledge? If I studied nature, myself, others, and the universe inside and out, would the teachings of the Kabbalah, regardless of their origins, line up with my truthful, authentic self? Would it help explain the bigger mysteries? How do the seven hermetic principles align and work with understanding and practice? Now, we'll eventually start answering all these questions as we get down into this playlist, this video series. If you follow these understandings and wisdoms to the letter, would you indeed understand yourself, others, nature, certain religions, and existence more? If so, would you become more conscious, aware, happy, and make different decisions? Could you indeed live a free and fruitful life for you? yourself for others for everyone all of us okay i hope you enjoyed this um i believe i don't know which one i'm gonna do next either the 22 pass or the four worlds i think i'll do the 22 pass because i think it's better that we understand once before we start breaking down things that we understand the whole of the tree itself Thanks for watching.